this album definitely has all the elements people would expect from a Devolved record. I didn't want to change the overall style of the band. It's all those basic elements that have always made up the Devolved sound are still there and will always be there. I definitely set out to make this the most extreme Devolved album, but I also wanted to make it the catchiest as well. So I particularly focused on having really strong choruses when I was writing all the vocals for this. Uh, you know, that would give each song more of its own identity. And obviously, you know, people would want to hear those parts over and over. Um, I had no intention at all in trying to incorporate any clean vocals or anything like that. You know, Devolved is meant to be super brutal, so that's what it is and that's how it should stay. Uh, I wanted to find other ways of writing really great hooks to these songs. And everyone who's heard this record so far has commented that, you know, we definitely achieved that. Um, the musicianship on this album is definitely a, a huge difference, I think, uh, you know, from anything that we've done in the past as well. I brought in a new guitarist to the band named Mark Hawkins, who's just a phenomenal guitar player. So I said to him, I definitely wanted to have solos and lots of guitar layers on these songs which was something we'd never really had before, but he's just such a killer player, so he knew how to make them work, and uh, you know, together we made them fit the music right. So that definitely added a whole new progressive element, I would say, to our sound. Well, certainly the biggest change to the writing process for Reprisal was that after our last album, I basically moved on with Devolved without the other members of the band. So I worked on creating this album entirely myself and was then going to get a new guitarist in to work with. Uh, you know, by doing that, I was able to have a very specific and focused direction and I knew exactly where the record was going to go. I spent a few solid weeks on my own in the studio just playing drums. I would either go in there with drum patterns written out or just in my mind or I would just jam on my own and come up with a whole bunch of ideas. Uh, I tracked all of those sessions, then took them home and loaded everything into my computer and just pulled everything apart and rearranged them firstly into sections and then eventually into rough structures of three or four different parts together and eventually you know becoming skeletons of songs it was basically like a a huge puzzle which i just kept arranging until i felt like all the pieces flowed and worked together as i was doing that i was also writing all the vocal patterns over those drum parts and i would just demo the vocals at home on my own so I think I came up with about 11 or 12 completed rough songs, I would say. And uh, once I had those, I contacted Mark Hawkins, who lives in Florida. And he said he'd be interested in uh, writing the guitar parts and working on the album with me. So we just started sending files back and forth until we eventually had the songs totally completed. Uh, you know, it's definitely an unusual way of writing an album. But it worked out great, and it was absolutely the easiest Evolved album to make so far. During all this time, I'd also been working on material for a new project that I'm doing called Throne of Ashes. And the singer in that band is a good friend of mine named Mark Hagblad. This is actually his studio that we're in right now, Dead Hero Studios. So I was in here working on songs for that project with him and I was really just blown away by the vocals that he was recording for that material. He actually has an amazing melodic voice and great range. I mean, he can sing anything. So uh, I said to him, you know, how would you feel about trying one of these Devolve songs? You know, because I knew he could do the heavy stuff as well. And he was all for it, so we recorded his vocals on one or two of the demos and I immediately just said, hey, you know, man, you've got to be a part of this. You're the right guy for uh, for Devolved. So he, he was totally down for it and it just worked out great. Uh, not only was he the best 
fit for the band vocally, but he also engineered and produced the whole album here with me, and he was really willing to take on that challenge and just make the best evolved record that we could make. Well, back when that particular Exhorter album came out, I was just getting into metal and I would say the more extreme kinds of metal anyway. And I was in a record store one day and uh, saw the cover of this album by this band Exhorter who I hadn't heard of at the time. Uh, the album was called The Law and I remember thinking the cover art was so awesome so I have to buy it. So I got it then and there and uh, when I got home and put it on, man I was just blown away, you know, it's such a killer record. Uh, one of my best mates and I, we would just sit at his house all day long drinking beer, cranking that album, and it really became one of the few records I could always go back to and it just never got old to me over time. Uh, I think it made total sense to do that particular track because it actually has a lot of elements I think we adopted into the Devolve sound with the really jagged mechanical riffing and very rhythmic style. So, you know, it was important to me that when it came time for us to record that song, uh, I really wanted to stay true to the original, but obviously just give it a bit more of a modern sound and production and, you know, make it a little more our own, I would say. But for me, it's, it's such a classic metal song, so I just wanted to do it justice and, you know, basically pay respect to a band that I strongly think was a pioneering band who to this day are very underrated and, and overlooked. Over the past eight or nine years, Dino and I have worked on a bunch of different music together. Uh, you know, I certainly look up to Dino and, you know, I consider him as one of my really good mates as well. And we definitely have a very similar approach when we write together. 99% of the time, I'll know exactly what beat or change Dino wants as he's sitting there, you know, coming up with all these riff ideas. So I've always been a huge Fear Factory fan, and when I started Devolved even, you know, I, I totally took that whole right hand picking, you know, guitar style that locks in with the kick drums, that whole concept, and made that a huge part of the Devolved sound. Uh, you know, that was something Fear Factory created way back on Soul of a New Machine. And of course, you know, now uh, there's a million bands who use that formula and, you know, have based their style on, uh, you know, on that formula. So I was definitely on the same page as Dino when we would write and I really understood the style that he wanted. Uh, so when it came time for him to start working on new material for this latest Fear Factory record, he called me up and just asked me to come into the studio and throw down beats and drum ideas to match his riffs. You know, the plan was I'd work on getting a bunch of rough songs and sections and parts together with Dino. Then Gene Hoagland would come in and, you know, they would refine the songs, do their thing from there. Uh, for some reason, you know, I guess it got to a point where Gene unfortunately wasn't able to do the album. You know, which I was actually really bummed about because Gene is hands down the best drummer in metal. You know, that's no secret. And uh, he's been my favourite drummer for as long as I can remember. And, you know, I've known Gene for years. He's a, a great guy and, you know, once again, someone that I really look up to. At the end of the day, you know, my role was just to help those guys get what they wanted and to make the drums as Fear Factory as possible and you know, to do what those guys said that, you know, oh yeah, do this beat here or this here, you know. So, I mean, you know, they certainly knew exactly what they were looking for and what parts were necessary. Uh, it was a great time and I think it's really uh, an amazing album and it's exactly what Dino and Bert wanted to make, uh, as well as being a record that all of us Fear Factory fans, I think, really wanted to hear and were waiting for. Yeah, I'm on a visa here in America, being from Australia, and that restricts me from traveling in and out of the country as much as I would need, uh, particularly for a band like Fear Factory that has such an intensive touring schedule. You know, I would have done it in a second if I could have, you know, of course, 
but after talking with lawyers and such, you know, there was just nothing that I or anyone else involved could do. So, you know, that kind of put a stop to that and um, there was nothing, uh, nothing more that any of us could do from there. In any case, though, you know, all that matters is that they have someone consistent up there behind the drums every night who plays those parts exactly as they are on the albums. And Mike Heller is the perfect guy to do that. You know, well, I spent a lot of time with Mike in the rehearsal room prior to them going out on and touring, uh, you know, for this new record. He's such a great dude, and he's easily one of the best drummers out there. So, you know, they got the right person, and uh, I've seen them play a few times with the new lineup, and it's just awesome. So, uh, you know, that's that's the way it goes. I knew this question was going to come up. Yeah, you know, there's been a lot of talk and a lot of debate about this. Look, first and foremost, I'm a drummer and I totally understand the purest drummer's point of view that you know, it's almost criminal to use drum machines. But the fact is drum machines in music are nothing new whatsoever. Uh, in some cases, you know, depending on the style of music that you're writing, I think it requires that very mechanical, cold and inhuman feel. So there's definitely a number of metal bands out there whose style totally relies on that sound. And of course at the very top of that list is Fear Factory. Uh, it makes total sense to me that uh, we would program the drums for the final record because that was the sound and feel that Dino and Bert wanted for this album and they wanted to go back to those industrial roots. Uh, if you listen to any of those classic industrial albums, they have a very distinct drum machine presence, which is a huge part of that industrial style. Uh, also, Fear Factory's always been that band who embraces technology in their sound and uses it as much as possible to push their music and production to another level, you know, beyond everyone else. So they've always been that band, I think, at the forefront of doing that. And, you know, they've always been very open about it and used it to their advantage. More importantly, you know, which I think a lot of people uh, have completely overlooked, is that it complements the actual concept of this record. Uh, you know, everything is very thought out and methodical that these guys did on this album. And that's just one other piece of the puzzle that fits. You know, I agree, drum programming would ruin a lot of bands and it wouldn't fit a lot of albums out there. But anyone who's disappointed that Fear Factory used drum programming, personally, I just don't think really gets the band or understands where they came from and what they're all about. I'm endorsed by Spawn Drums, uh, Sabian Cymbals, Axis Pedals, Promark Sticks, and Aquarian Drumheads. So I use all their products, you know, which are killer. Uh, great companies, great people, you know, who look after me. So, you know, I couldn't ask for anything better. To write drum parts that complement the songs that you're playing. You know, to me, the best drummers are the ones that make their parts make the song better. It doesn't all have to be a million miles an hour just, you know, blasting through every song. You know, I love all that and the fast stuff and there's so many amazing drummers who can do it, but, you know, you need to complement those with variations and cool transitions, you know, that make the faster parts stand out even more and the groove parts, you know. It, I just think you really need to have those layers to make the song even better and you know drummers can do that uh, there's always going to be other drummers out there who can play what you play but there's not that many who can really sit back and make great songs and great music and in the end you know that's what we all want to hear and that's what people are going to remember